Okay, say we want to get into the tank here. How do we get this head off? Well, it's not really difficult. You will uh, unplug your power, disconnect your salt line, disconnect your drain line, put the uh, system, either turn the water off or put it in bypass, put it up the backwash to relieve any pressure on the tank, then you can unclip the valve at two sides releasing the bypass from the valve. I'm going to just skip that part because my valve's not actually connected to the water pipes. But if it was, I would simply undo the two clips on the side, pulling the unit away from the pipes and the bypass. Now comes the hard part. Uh, helps if you have two people. Usually you can do it with one person. You must grab onto the tank knowing you're going to get some fiberglass on you and pull towards yourself with your left hand or whatever it takes to get it started. Now I'll tell you once you get it started then it's fairly easy but sometimes it can be hard to get started that's why you might want somebody to hold the tank so you can easily use two hands to turn the valve. The valve will unscrew, get this power cable out of our way, it only goes around a few times. Getting much easier as we get nearer to the end. Okay, we're at the end, I can tell, because it's getting wobbly. In the middle, you will find a pipe. The pipe may stay in and the valve will come off or sometimes the pipe will come up with the valve, in which case I recommend just grabbing a hold of the pipe with one hand, holding the valve, twisting a little bit, and pulling it up till it separates. And you can push the pipe back down in, uh, or it may want to stick up a little bit. And if it's in resins, then you can blow into it and get it back down to the bottom. Uh, this valve has a distributor, top distributor we call it. It is snapped into place. Uh, we send our new valves out with these. It's optional on most water softeners, but short softeners, overfilled softeners, or ones with white tannin resins require it. Carbon tanks, backwashing carbon tanks, will always have a required upper basket. It's similar to the bottom basket that's attached to the end of the pipe. And the new size is 1.05 outer diameter, and that's what all modern valves will take. That's the opening. Now, should you find that you have a smaller size when replacing your valve, let me go get that smaller size for you. <clears throat> Here is a small, what we call 13 16th. It's actually got an OD of exactly 3 quarter, but since it's not called 3 quarter pipe, we don't want to confuse you. And you see, if you were to put it in there, it's got a lot of play. The same happens when it gets up to the O-ring. It does not lock into the O-ring here in the valve. It will go up there. You can put this on. You think you've got it connected, but without that seal, the water will just come in and go out, never going through your tank, therefore never conditioning your water whatsoever. So whenever changing a valve, make sure that you replace the old 13 16ths with um, some 1.05, which happens to be the outer diameter of Schedule 40 3 quarter pipe. The 3 quarter refers to its inner diameter. Now you can also make an adapter. That Schedule 40 pipe will slide right on top of this. So you can take about 2 inches of Schedule 40 3 quarter inch PVC, glue it on top of your old pipe, then it will snugly fit into the valve. There's also a bushing you can get, a rubber bushing that goes inside here that allows you to use your old pipe. We recommend replacing the pipe when changing the valve, if at all possible, and we will include the upper and lower basket so that you can make a whole new pipe, stick it in your tank, and everything will be the correct dimensions and solid seal. And of course you can put the valve back on, 
spins nicely by hand. You will not need a tool to over tighten it. There's an O-ring on here. You may want to put a little silicone on it. Change it if it's really old and has gotten flattened out. But there, it's snug, and I'm going to give it just a little bit more. Now it's tight. Should you happen to notice a little seeping, you can always come back and give it a little bit more. But tight with a little extra push for that last quarter is really all you need to do. Like I said, the O-ring here is the seal. Uh, rarely will the O-rings leak. Usually if you get a leak here, it's a little crack, hairline crack in the tank. Uh, in which case you're looking at a new tank. But that's a whole other video.